make your escape. Hey, before we get in the episode, don't forget, we have got a free giveaway of four weeks of my book, uh, Strength for the Week, the 52-week journal uh, resource uh, tracker uh, that you can use to document your week. So I'm giving away four weeks of those 52. All I'm asking for is just a quick email from you. It, it's not hard. Uh, just type in last in line leadership at gmail.com and type in giveaway and send me an email uh, with your name. And I'm going to put those names in a uh, drawing and we're going to give one of those pers- people a free book the entire 52 weeks. But all you have to do, if you don't win, you'll still get four free weeks. So all you have to do is email me. Um, not too much to ask. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at this resource that I've created for uh, guys to just get better at tracking and documenting their week. And you get uh, a scripture each week as well uh, that'll help you kind of anchor and settle into some of that strength for the week to overcome any challenges you have. Uh, so email me, uh, follow us on Instagram primarily, last underscore in underscore line underscore leadership. Uh, DM me if you uh, if you like the episode and need feedback on these. I mean, reviews are great, so uh, put a review in, preferably a good one. Uh, if it's not a good one, maybe you can just email me and give me some pointers on what I need to do better. So, uh, but yeah, just uh, good reviews are always welcome. So I appreciate that. Uh, don't forget to email me, and we can get you in the drawing, and we can definitely, at the very least, get you four free weeks of the book Strength for the Week. Now back to the show. What do you know about change and what do you think about it? A lot of us are creatures of habit. A lot of us like routine. A lot of us like um, the refreshing monotony of something that's steady, that's rhythmic, that's probably created this cadence in our life that we could just do with our eyes closed. But let me just tell you, I am one of those people and I do not like change, but I got something for you today that might help you maybe elevate and then accelerate through some new endeavors that you have either presenting themselves now, or you might have an opportunity to walk into in the future. And so today is how to elevate and accelerate within a new endeavor. So three tips I'm going to have for success in uncharted waters. Um, But before we do that, obviously I have to uh, put a caveat on that and qualify that there are three obstacles in my opinion um, to, to thriving in these new endeavors. There's three obstacles, there's three tips. So we can win, but if we're not watching out for these other things, we can get distracted and we can get knocked off course, you know, as we pursue these. So, I, I think that uh, in my case, anyway, like I, I, I say I welcome new endeavors, kind of something that's maybe not tapped into yet, something that I'm not sure of completely, that I may not have all the assurances that I want. Uh, sometimes I like the mystery of it. Sometimes I'll, I get enamored by the adventure of it. Um, if anybody's ever gone hiking, I just came back from a guy's weekend in Colorado and, you know, long drive up from Texas, Colorado mountains, just beautiful. Um, but we, we go hike, uh, around this lake and it's probably three miles or so. And we're going through this woods and we don't know, I mean, there's, there could be bear, there could be bobcats, there could be all kind of wildlife that we're maybe not used to here in Texas, or at least not in suburbs of Texas. And so there's an unknown there. There's an uncertainty and it's kind of this anxiety, but this anticipation, a healthy anxiety. And so you're, you're mesmerized by the, the things around you and, you know, you almost get hypnotized by the beauty and the journey and every step that you're taking without sort of thinking about, okay, well, what's out here that could eat me? You know, that's what I'm thinking once we get involved and inside and into it. Like I'm thinking, okay, 
something in here wants to snack on me. Uh, but but then that kind of quickly goes away when you see this majesty that is this lake at the foot of these mountains, and then you know the sunlight's coming in, and it's just unbelievable, breathtaking. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's some adventure to the unknown. There's some uh, just this anticipation that we have when we don't know what's coming or we know there's an opportunity for us to do something that we've never done before, but we're not sure, but we're excited, but we don't know why really we're excited because we're not sure. And we haven't been on this road. So I, I got to tell you, there's the three obstacles that I come across personally, and I hope this helps you. And, and another thing too, like I know that maybe the general public of non podcast hosts think that podcast hosts all think they're the expert in certain topics or or they wouldn't be talking about it. that's not true really like i don't think any podcast host out there would tell you they're an expert at, at a topic they're talking about but maybe they've learned some things maybe they've done some things wrong and they've they're willing to share that so you don't follow suit in the same mistake but we don't all know everything about every topic that we're discussing so I'm just going to give you the three obstacles that I've battled that I'm sure I'm not alone in battling. And then I'm going to give you the three tips for elevating and accelerating in this new endeavor that maybe you are right in the middle of, and maybe you're considering taking a leap of faith over here, or maybe you don't even know about it yet, but maybe this will equip you for when that day approaches. All right. So the first obstacle is going to be the fear of the unknown. Like I just said, like, the unknown of the bear in the woods that wants to eat me. Like I have a little bit of fear of that. I'm not going to lie. I don't know that he's out there, but I don't know that he's not. So the fear of the unknown, whenever you're going into a new endeavor, um, obviously marriage is a big deal. Like you, you think, you know, that person, but you don't really know the union and the, uh, the entity that is marriage necessarily because you, unless you've been married before, obviously, but if you're getting married again, chances are you didn't do it right the first time or somebody didn't, maybe not you, but anyway, you get where I'm going. So if, if it's marriage, like there's an unknown, unknown there, like this uh, institution of marriage, you don't quite have all of the I's dotted and T's crossed until you get in it and you actually experience it. So the fear of the unknown is is rampant in that marriage element. Um, you know, fear of the unknown in any new thing. Uh, now, now you could potentially just jump into something that uh, you have a little experience in, but it's a new version of it. But I think I think what I'm saying is when when we try to reinvent the wheel and step out of our comfort zone, step out of our swim lane, and go into something totally foreign to us obviously calculated risk, but, you know, going into that, not knowing, like if it's a new business, you don't know that you're going to make the same amount of money you were making in the existing current career you chose, but you're taking that leap because you feel like there, there are some opportunities there and it, and it taps into some more of your skill set, and you can be your own, you know, you have the autonomy and the freedom to run your business, how you want to run it. And uh, so you, you jump into that unknown with a lot of uncertainty. So there's fear in that. What we don't know is fearful sometimes. And so we can't have this, all the answers. We, we can't know how it always will turn out. We can't, you know, rarely can we know all the answers to the test. So that's a, that's, that's a point to our faith draws us you know, closer to a God that does know all the answers, draws us closer to a God that we trust. And so when put that's called faith, obviously, um, just this confident hope and things that we can't see yet. And, and so that battle that will, that will battle some of that fear that will conquer some of that fear, but still the fear of the unknown is real. Sometimes we just got to press through and do it anyway, assuming we're not just closing our eyes and jumping off a cliff, not knowing what, is out there not calculating some of those risks, not taking into account some of the dangers around the corner. And, and, you know, we're just going blindfolded. So I'm not saying do that. So the fear of the unknown is the first obstacle because we, we can't thrive if we're fearful. So 
you know, hopefully you've prayed about this venture that you're considering or that you're in or that you might be faced with in the future. Hopefully we've, you pray leading up to, and you're asking for doors to open and you're asking for wisdom and guidance. And so maybe you've got that answer and then you take that step and, and sometimes you don't always know what the outcome will be. Second one's going to be the noisy whispers. That's what I call it. Uh, the white noise, the noisy whispers, just the, the negative voices around you of people that are skeptical, uh, maybe even your own voice in your own head. And you've got the, you've seen the, the caricature of the devil and the angel on your shoulder. And, you know, the devil's whispering in your ear, no way you pull this off. And the angel's like, okay, trust God. You've already been given kind of a vision and a dream for this. So trust, trust that. And so back and forth you go and, uh, you know, or, or you've, you're, you're around people that you've maybe thought were going to give you some encouragement, but they're sort of this, uh, devil's ad advocate. Um, and, and they, they paint this whole thing as a disaster or they're, they're gloom and dooming you, uh, to death because they either are fearful for you or they don't have the courage enough to do something that you're about to do. So I say we got to tune out some of the white noise, some of the noisy whispers that are out there, because look, those whispers can get loud if we start to embrace and, and start to kind of uh, welcome those, or we start to give those sustenance within our mental framework. So we, we can't give those a ton of weight, uh, you know, depending on another caveat, you know, there's a lot of caveats on things, but depending on whether or not you have a circle that you trust and a count, a godly counsel that's speaking into your life and they might be giving you some red flags or some blind spots you may not have thought about. That's, that's not noisy, you know, whispers and white noise. That's not negative stuff telling you to not do it out of fear. That's asking you probably to calculate a little more and consider a little more things, things that you may not have considered, but the noisy whispers, it's, it could be you and it could be others, but there's a lot of people out there maybe that they, they become envious that you have the, the nuts to really go out and try this, that you've got a set um, that, you know, this intestinal fortitude that is uh, allowing you to take this risk. Like you're, you're willing to just, you know what, I'm, I'm doing it anyway, and, and I'll do it despite the fear. And so, I, you know, I guess the podcast could be an example for me because never did it before, uh, don't have training, formal training. I don't have, you know, technology training. I don't, I, all I know is really how to have conversations and how to be curious and ask good questions and facilitate conversations and, and build a rapport quickly with people. That's really all I'm good at. So it seems to be working well, um, in this space. And so, but I mean, uh, there was no reason for me to believe on paper that I was qualified or equipped to do this. Uh, so I probably had some doubt voices going on in there that were mostly me. Um, but you will have people that are envious that, um, not that I did, but you'll have those people that don't, necessarily have the guts to, to try something that they don't have all the guarantees in the world about. And so they just don't ever try. They don't ever walk out there. They don't ever take a step out on the, on the ledge. And so they'll, they'll start to kind of whisper those, those thoughts of negativity and, and discouragement for you and try to kind of talk you off the cliff a little bit and try to back you up out of that dream that could just be exactly what the doctor ordered or exactly what God ordained for your life. So we got to be careful on who we're listening to. Got to be careful on how we talk to ourselves and allow the voice of ourself in our minds. We got to be careful of how we let that resonate, what we internalize and what we know how to filter. The third one would be past failures. So I've got a lot of those. I mean, how long do you have? Cause we could go for hours on that. I'm sure you maybe have one or two mistakes yourself. So past failures can be an obstacle to us, like elevating into this new endeavor and accelerating, getting traction into this new thing that could just be what we were called to do. And so past failures 
you you know what your life has been up to this point. You know your journey. I know mine. You know, I've I've made some bad mistakes in marriage. I've made some bad mistakes in my professional life. I've made some bad mistakes, obviously, uh, you know, in in relationships or or you know, with friends or or whatever. But I, I know that that cannot be what holds me back from growing or progressing and moving forward, right? In in whatever journey that I'm supposed to be on here. Um I, I know that that our pack like the devil likes to like magnify that, likes to like take a picture of it, show it to us on a daily basis. Whenever we start to maybe embark on um uh, this this new adventure, like we're about to step into something that could be great, could be God, you know, anointed, purposeful calling that we're about to step into. And the devil doesn't want that. He doesn't like it. So he's going to show us a picture of our past and all the things we did wrong and say, look, past will repeat itself. He'll tell us that history does repeat itself. You will do this again. You will fail again. Like he likes to be very convincing in that. And, and guess what? We believe it. Uh, a lot of us believe it. Uh, it's a matter of what you do with that. Like if you actually allow yourself to digest that and internalize it, then you will be held captive, right? You will be shackled up and you will be bound and you'll end up being paralyzed when it comes to mobility into this new endeavor, these uncharted waters that could be the next career, the next relationship, the next, um, just destination for you as far as uh you know whatever god has for you so past failures can be that uh achilles heel for a lot of us and, and so if we're ever going to step into something new if we're ever going to step into something that could just be this magnificent uh destination for us if we're ever going to step into that we, we've got to take these three obstacles and we've got to trash them. We've got to see them for what they are, not ignore them, uh, but address them and deal with them and then cut bait on them and trim the fat on them and get them out of our lives because they cannot be this wall that we fail to climb over to get into this new endeavor, this new thing, this unknown that that's right in front of us. Um, so that's the three obstacles. Okay. Now we've got three tips for elevating and accelerating three tips for you. So I say, we're going to, we got to welcome the new that's in us. This newness of skill set, the new, courage that maybe we've never tapped into before, uh, the new side of ourselves that could be revealed if we do take this leap into these uncharted waters, welcome that new person that you might see in the mirror. Welcome stump, welcome that person that you maybe didn't know was there. Um, and you never know, you never know what's going to happen and who you're going to show to yourself. Like what's in us you know, isn't always what we've shown in the past. So all the ways that we've been, the things we've done, the person we are to this point doesn't mean that's all that's in there. And so I say, welcome the new you whenever you open up a door that you really didn't think you could open and you step into a role that you really didn't think you were capable of stepping into because you didn't know it existed or you didn't know you were capable or you didn't know what the end result would be. So when you jump in both feet, like you might, you might see a new you there that you didn't see coming and you didn't expect, which can be refreshing. Like we all talk about getting into this mundane, you know, repetitive vanilla life that maybe some of us have sunk into or have accepted, right? over the years and and we're looking for that new kind of skipping our step, this new 
uh, person that, that is within us because it, it maybe always were, was there, but we kind of pushed it down because it, you know, we were comfortable. So we don't know who that guy is. But these new things that we step into kind of reveal that, that somebody within us exists that we didn't, that maybe you want, maybe you need to meet the new you. Maybe you need to meet that person. And the only way to do that is to just take the veil off, walk through that door that maybe you don't know is out there um, or, or that you don't know what's on the other side. Uh, that So I say welcome the new you. Like, you know, you're not going to do something tragic and that's going to hurt people around you or cost you your house or your family and not provide, you know, you're not going to do something ridiculous. But, I mean, let's face it there might be some things out there that you could afford the opportunity to be a little riskier in or to be a more adventurous in I'm living like I should, I can do that. I could be a little more adventurous or, you know, just a little bit more. I don't, I don't like the word risky, but just take calculated risks for the sake of seeing what I'm capable of. Cause you might surprise yourself. Speaking of surprise. So the next one, is going to be embrace the surprise. So embrace uh, the fact that, you know, it it may not turn and qu- turn out quite like you thought. Uh, embrace the, the surprise that you didn't think of this, this, or this, but guess what? We pivot. We look at it and we decide, okay, I'm going to take care of this. This is something that I can handle. You know, I didn't see that coming, but I can deal with that. We can pivot, we can move, we can bump and run, stick and move. We can get around that. So these little things that try to uh, suppress our progress or impede our progress, like not all of those are, you know, uh, deal breakers, you know, not, not all of those are, are a death sentence to this dream or this endeavor, or this, you know, these things that we're trying to do that, that, that are new and unchartered. So, I would say embrace the surprise. Hey, whoa, I didn't know that was going to happen. Okay, cool. Maybe I'll tap into a new part of myself on how to problem solve. Maybe I'll tap into myself on, hey, I need to probably swallow my pride and reach out to somebody and ask them, what do I do here? You know, maybe I'll, you know, you can surprise yourself whenever surprises come at you. You surprise yourself by the way you react to them (laughs) different than you used to, different than you ever have. You know, uh, the, the surprise could be honestly could be that it turned out better than you thought. Sometimes I think we're afraid of success. Sometimes I think, and we'll never say it. And maybe consciously we're not thinking that, but I think we don't know what to do when something does work well, then, then maybe all of a sudden we think the bar has been raised and then I'll never exceed that, you know, or I'll never meet that expectation. So we, maybe we're afraid of success. Maybe we don't know how to handle success. That's, that's a problem. So be surprised by success. Like, Hey, that was, that was better than I thought. I've never tried that. That worked out well. Let's do that again. Let's replicate. Let's, you know, rinse, repeat on this deal. So you, you are capable of surprising yourself. You're capable of embracing the surprise around the next corner on this new endeavor, because you didn't know what was really there anyway. So let's, let's be flexible. I think that's what I'm trying to say is that things are fluid. We've got to be flexible. We've got to kind of know that surprises will happen, but let's embrace them. And then, you know, as long as they're not tragically, uh, you know, the end all be all deal breakers uh, of the dream, then let's, let's embrace that surprise and let's move on and get, get people around us that, maybe have dealt with that before. And if not, you know what, we figure it out and and then move forward. But I think it would be a crime. It would be a shame to let little surprises stifle us and hamstring us from really walking through into this endeavor. Um, So yeah, that's the second one is embrace, embrace the surprise. So this last one is prep expectations. So we're kind of into prepping a little bit. Um, you know, we're, we're doing some canning and pickling and we're getting some dehydrated things and buckets of, there's buckets of food and rice and beans and different things that are going to last 40 years in my house. And uh, so we're, we're prepped for, you know, 
maybe a few months of, of being without food uh, in the grocery stores. I don't know. Feels like we're prepped, but our expectations need prepping as well. Our expectations, whenever we start something new, we've got to prepare uh, and understand to have a realistic expectations. And, and then we've got to expect that we, we may not have all the answers. We may not have accounted for anything, for everything. So managing the expectations, prepping the expectations. Uh, I think prepped expectations are crucial in anything we do, not just new things. So we've got to get our mindset kind of wrapped around this concept of, look, I expect uh, there to be, you know, hazards here along this road. I expect there to be some potholes. It's going to be bumpy. Like I expect that. And because I think of people that, that are caught off guard by challenges or adversity when they're caught off guard by it. I think that it, it shocks our system. So then we go into this survival mode and then we it's fight or flight. And a lot of people take off and a lot of people tuck and bug out. And, and that's where a lot of people quit. So it's based on their expectation. They weren't fully realistically prepared for what to expect. Right. Right. So I think an open mind and and staying flexible, right? Being able to kind of stick and move mentally uh, helps because then you, you, you can't account for everything, but you can account for your reaction to everything. And, and so a new job or a new, you know, maybe business opportunity, a new partnership, a new relationship, uh, being a parent for the first time, you don't know how that's going to go. Like that's new area for you. So that's, you got to manage expectations, right? You got to prep those and understand that there are going to be several things you don't know what to do, but natural ability, natural, uh, nurturing, natural, uh, just the human element can take over in certain situations for the parenting example. I think we all have, tried, failed certain things as parents, and then sort of the natural parenting, love, caring thing, nurturing comes out in us. And then we kind of surprise ourselves there and we're like, Hey, I can do this. So the, the expectation, uh, in, in your life, if it's a job, if it's career, you know, those things, anything new that you're doing requires us to be realistic and it requires us to account for landmines account for adversity and, and so i don't know what you're dealing with i don't know what you're about to have come your way i don't know what new endeavor you're about to face or are facing but i bet if if you're in the middle of it some of these things we've talked about are hitting home and you're probably resonating a little bit with some of these concepts and this some of the obstacles and then some of the tips you're probably saying yeah that works or Hey, I think I could try that because that's what I'm going through right now. So, you know, your expectations uh, are un uncertainty could be a good expectation because, you know, you're not you don't know the outcome yet. Um, expectation that there will be bumps in the road uh, that takes the element of surprise in a negative way out. Uh, but it allows you to be flexible and it allows you to. Uh, create solutions and and come up with alternatives so that you can pivot uh, and go the right direction and get through that and push through it. So that's where we're at on this. Like I, I just, I don't know. I felt, I guess, impressed to cover this because I feel like I know some people and maybe myself included that might be on the verge of maybe a possible new endeavor. Maybe, uh, you know, there's somebody out there that's, Flipping a coin, not literally, uh, but maybe back and forth on something new that is uncertain and unsure how it'll turn out. Maybe you're toying with an idea. Um, I say pray about it. I say feel that, that the Holy Spirit kind of guiding you, and I feel the, feel the confirmation uh, that, that that is the direction to go before you just blindly jump in. But when you do that and it's new, 
there will be obstacles. It'll be the fear of the unknown. It'll be those noisy whispers of your own voice of negativity, negativity. And then some people around you, there might be those, you got to cut bait on those. And then past failures, the devil is real. We're in a spiritual battle. He will show you pictures of your failures. He will put them right in your face and remind you of everything you ever did wrong. But the three tips to, uh, to overcome those and to walk in this new thing, whatever that is for you, welcome the new you because you're going to have a party you come out that you didn't know was there. You've got qualities within you, God given that maybe nothing you've ever tried has brought out those qualities and, and they're just waiting to be tapped, tapped into call yourself out of the bullpen, call that new you out and, and, and really get to know a new version of you in that situation and uh, welcome the surprise, whatever the surprise may be good or bad. Welcome the surprise. Don't be, uh, shocked by anything, just welcome it. Hey, you didn't see that coming. Okay, great. Now what do we do? So that's got to be a factor is just understand there will be the surprise, but we'll, uh, welcome that and embrace it. And then finally, the expectations prep, prep your expectations, have realistic expectations, uh, understand that you can't account for everything. You're going to have to pivot, understand that, uh, there's going to be some stuff out there that, that you're going to have to press through, but expect a lot out of yourself, but don't be caught off guard when something doesn't go the way you thought it would expect that because this is a new thing. You can't expect to be a professional at it if you've never done it. So expect that there's a learning curve, expect that mistakes are going to happen, expect that you can get through it though. So that's, that's what you can be reassured of is, not what's going to happen, but what you do when it does. So with that, be blessed. Make your escape.